clothes? Should be right, right in front of my washer, okay. above my, on my bag or in my coat. Okay. Okay, we are now joined by the 2023 NASCAR Xfinity Series champion, Cole Custer. We'll get right to media questions. If you have one, please raise your hand. We'll start over here with uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Field, the race experts. I see you got the bud there, Cole. Like it? Yeah, bud heavy diesel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, I especially needed just after that restart, kind of walk us through just how it was. Man, I mean, uh, the caution came out there with, like, five to go, and I was, you know, you just try and keep your calm because there's nothing you can do about it, you know? But uh, it was just, man, like, we had them covered right there, I felt like. And, you know, like, every single restart, it's it's a toss-up. Like, this place, it's always a toss-up, top or bottom. And uh, I went with my gut on the top because the, the resin started working in. But, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. The seven was able to get to our outside, and I tried to block them. Um, but from there I was kind of in a tough spot being in the middle. So I just tried to make sure I got a good exit and, uh, downshifted it and tried to make it off turn two and we were able to get a good run and, uh, just make it happen there. I mean, without, I, I mean, I don't think it would happen ever again, but, uh, it was just unbelievable restart that worked out right. And I just, if, if we didn't have the car we had either, it wouldn't have worked out. You know, we had such a fast car. I mean, historically this has just been Gibbs's racetrack, you know, and, uh, those guys put up a great fight, John Hunter and all those guys, but it's a very proud moment for our team to come here. And it hasn't been our strongest racetrack, and we put it to them. I know Tony was blown away when he came in here and was talking about it. Did you guys talk afterward? Yeah, I mean, you know, to have Tony as a boss, it's it's pretty unreal, you know, just having a guy that has been there and done that and everything. And, you know, before the race, probably 30 minutes before the race, I mean, we just sat in the hauler and talked about, you know, his dirt racing stuff and his drag racing stuff. And, you know, it's just cool to be, be able to talk with a guy just, you know, that is in so much of everything in motorsports and has been there and done that and everything you can ask questions about. And it, just to have him in, you know, be able to get advice from him is just huge. So it, it was a definitely a proud moment. Coming up here to Bob. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Uh, have you heard from Kislowski at all? Like, are you allowed <laughs> to celebrate, or do you have to kind of tone it down until you get official word that you're in the clear for tomorrow? Or are you, are you yet. telling him to find somebody <laughs> else for tomorrow? Yeah, I, I don't know yet. <laughs> so uh, they're trying to find my phone because apparently he's uh, tried to contact me, I guess. So uh, I don't know yet. <laughs> We're going to find out here soon. But uh, I, I'm, I'm fine right now, so I think uh, we'll find out here in a minute, and we'll find out for tomorrow. But uh, we'll enjoy it a little bit, but if it if it needs to be, we'll, we'll be there tomorrow ready to work. Come up here, David. And hopefully uh, he has a – I think he's had the kid from what I've heard. I don't know. But uh, it's cool that he has a kid and uh, everything's good there. Hey, uh, David Brandt from AP. Tony, Tony talked a little bit about how proud he was of the way that you handled kind of the demotion this year and everything. But is, you know, this has to be validating for you. You know, it, it obviously that can't be fun to go through that. But to, to do what you've done this year, what's it mean to you? Yeah, it means the world. I mean, you get kind of knocked down a little bit. You know, things when you go to the cup level, I mean, it's so, so competitive. And, you know, things you can just – not go right for a few years, you know, like the cars, it's just how, how it is, how tight it is, you know, I mean, you work with a great group of guys up there, but it, you know, just how, it, how it all works out. It just, sometimes it just doesn't work, you know? So, um, to come down here and, you know, still have people believe in you work with JT and really grind it out. And we really didn't start out the year very good. I mean, we, we came here the first race and we sucked. <laughs> I mean, we, we ran horrible and, uh, you know, to come back here and really just bring a bullet and, everything that we've learned throughout the year and communicated. I probably asked JT 10,000 questions this year, and he's truly looked into every single one. You know, I've never had somebody who I, – I, I'm a pain to work with. I'll, I'll admit it. I'm a pain to work with. <laughs> and I asked a lot of – I lost a lot of questions and overthink a lot of things. And uh, he, he looks into every single one because I think we both care so much about what we do and um, – being able to bring a fast car to the racetrack, and I just can't thank him enough for uh, uh, believing in me.
Um, yeah, I mean, I think being able to work with a group, you know, we were a pretty young group, you know, JT has been along around for a long time. Um, but obviously a rookie crew chief this year and our engineers are our younger guys. And, um, but being a part of a, a new group and being able to build that throughout the year, that's one of the most proud things I've been a part of, you know, cause they, I feel like they leaned on me, you know, uh, to be a leader. So I feel like it's a very proud moment to be able to build what we built this year and, um, go from, you know, a team that was, you know, solid at the start of the year, but build it into a championship, a championship team now. Going to the back to Davey. Davey Siegel with Sirius XM to your left and back, Cole. Um, Those two restarts that were at the end when the caution came out, understandably, you were a bit frustrated over the radio. Were you kind of expecting those cautions to come out? And if so, how were you able to refocus and kind of just tackle the task at hand there? It's tough. I mean, uh, you know, you just can't control it. You know, I mean, caution came out with five to go or something, and it was just, you know, you're frustrated, you know, because it's like, man, we had them covered there. Um, but it is what it is. Like, you know, I've, we've done this long enough where you got to keep your cool and you got to take a deep breath, and it is what it is. So um, you got to make it happen that next one. And, you know, it about didn't happen. <laughs> you know, it about all went went south. But we were able to keep our calm still after that and make it happen on the last lap. So um, it, it was a pretty proud moment for all of us. Tonight was much different than last night, obviously. What would you attribute that to? You know, I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll say the championship four in this deal raced so well. I mean, John Hunter, Justin Allgaier, Sam Mayer, everybody raced so well. We so well. We just didn't. We raced hard, but we didn't hit each other. You know, like I mean, that's what people should really look at. You know, I mean, we were able to make moves and race our our tails off and still not wreck each other. Um, so it's just a hats off to everybody. And I think everybody in that championship four deserves to be a champion. I mean, Justin Allgaier is a, just a huge, uh, unbelievable race car driver and deserves to be a champion. And, uh, just John Hunter also, I mean, what they've done this year is unbelievable and Sam Mayer, how much he's growing. So, um, it's just, it's, it's awesome to be a part of that championship four and, uh, very proud to be part of it. Okay, we'll go to uh, Deb next. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Uh, Cole, you were talking about JT and asking him all the questions, but he's been there from day one and watched you grow up. Did that have, give you more of a comfort level, or how did you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I've I've known JT since I was five years old. You know, he uh, his first job in the top three series with, with was with Jason Leffler and uh in 2004 with Haas CNC Racing so I mean I was around there because you know my dad Joe he works at the team and um you know he's just always been you know hickory boy and you know he's just the nicest guy in the world so um I think I I knew I wanted to work with him this year and because he he believed in you you know like he's such an awesome person and uh being able to he's so smart too I mean he isn't he he won't say it, but he's he's one of the smartest people out there. So being able to bounce ideas off him and have somebody who truly believes in you is is a huge part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think he helped a lot with just how you want to have that relationship go, you know. Um you need somebody who believes in you, but I mean, as the race car driver, you need to be involved, but you're also don't know everything that goes into it because you're not the one working on it. So you have to know your place a little bit, but at some point you're the one holding the steering wheel. And unfortunately you're the only person out there that can tell them what's going on. <laughs> so, um, having that relationship go right and really be able to bounce ideas off each other is, is very important. We have one, Luis, do you still have a question? Luis Torres, the podium finish. Of course, this was your first oval win since you came back. You won at Portland and Chicago. How much, knowing a lot of what's on the line, you wanted to win at this track, considering you have this time of track adapted to you, and then obviously the overtime kind of put you in that spot where you have to deliver, which Tony was proud of you for being mature and going about it in a way that it was the polar opposite of Friday. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it was kind of kind of – 
was frustrating this year because we were almost like the road course guys, you know, like we, we could be good on road courses, but we couldn't make it happen on the ovals. Um, but I mean, just what these guys have done in the playoffs is just unbelievable. Um, how are we've showed up at Bristol and we were a uh, top five could have won that race every single race in the playoffs. We probably could have won. So it, to be able to really turn it around and make it happen was, uh, unbelievable. And that's just a testament to everybody, our team. I mean, I think, uh, JT, Davin Restivo, he doesn't get enough credit here, um, but he was my engineer in 2019, and when we won a lot of races, and he he's Riley's crew chief now, and he's a huge part of what we're doing. Uh, Mike Shiplett, him and Davin came over in 19, and they're a huge part of what we've done here. Um, but Richard Boswell, um, Jabbo, um, Jeff Mendering. I mean, it's everybody who's put everything into this team has uh, really grown us into what we are now. Go over here. Cooper and BlazeRadioOnline.com. This is kind of a two-part question. Um, you know, going into turn three, about halfway through the race, some was setting over here. Um, some was setting, but halfway through the race, you know, how difficult was it to see going into turn three? And also, how drastically, you know, did the track change over the course of the night? Yeah, I mean, it definitely it got tighter and tighter as the night went. And especially when it went to night, there was so much grip. You're just pushing it into the corner harder. So that just puts more load on the right front tire, I guess, and just made it all tighter. So we had to adjust the car, and um, once we adjusted the car, we were, we were right back where we needed to be. Um, but it was definitely – had to keep up with the racetrack because it, uh, it definitely changed a little bit through the night. And the resin came in. I mean, the resin, we haven't seen that all, all weekend really, but it finally came in there, and you had to really try and keep up with it. Yeah, right next to him. Eric List, Blaze Radio as well. We saw you get a kind of a prolonged chance to really sit in your car when you pulled it into victory lane. What emotions were just running through your head, and what were you thinking as you just kind of got to sit with your own thoughts? I mean, just a lot of relief, you know. Like, I mean, it's such a pressure situation. You're just trying to keep your cool during that whole time, and um, just a lot of pride in, you know, what our team's done. You know, it's just a, a great day of being able to build what we built this year and um, really close it off how we wanted to. Here to Wolfgang, then Reed. Thank you. Uh, Wolfgang Monzer from German Rennsport Press Agency. Uh, technical question. I suppose from the very first race in Daytona until the last one here in Phoenix, you and your team made a lot of development for at the car or for the car. Can you maybe address the areas in which the car has been improved until the very last race? I can't tell you that. <laughs> and everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got raised next year. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, um, I think it's just a lot of little things. You know, it's not like one thing that was like, oh, man, like we just found something. It was just a lot of little things of how you, you know, springs and shocks and, um, you know, just what we're doing. Um, heights, you know, things like that. So I think just little things like that, they add up. And we've really just started to put it all together because – I mean, it's so tough. I mean, look at the Cup Series. I mean, it's the whole half a second covers the whole field. So it's just those little things matter a lot and what you're doing. It's not like somebody finds something unbelievable. It's just those little things. And then once you find them, it, it makes a big difference. Will you move some of those races at Xfinity next year? Yep, yep, Xfinity next year, yeah. Uh, what do you say? I think uh, we're running the same body. I think Ford's running the same body next year for Xfinity. Yep. I think. I have to make yeah, sure on that. I believe that's right. <laughs> yeah, the, the Mustang that was unveiled was just for the Cup Series. Uh, Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire Service. Um, Cole, when Tony was in here, he said that he had to look at the replay on the board like three or four times and still had not figured out how you did what you did on that restart lap. Can you – basically go through what you remember of that, what you did, and how you got down to the prime real estate entering turn three. Yeah, I mean, well, when the 7 and the 20 both were out, you know, I was in the middle. I was pretty much in a no-win situation. <laughs> so at that point, I realized that, and I was like, I just got to make the corner here, make sure I do something decent, because if I just drive it in there, I'm going to wreck. Um, so I, just, I knew I was in a no-win situation, so I tried to make it good on the exit. And from there, you know, tried to downshift to get a good exit and uh, get a good run into turn three. And from there, it was I had a good run in there, so I could just try and take it. 
from the seven car. And uh, from there, I mean, our, our car was good and was able to turn and make it happen on the exit. Lee, did you have a question? Go up here to Lee and then Cole. Lee Spencer, CatchPrints.com. Cole, congratulations, first of all. Um, I look at what John Hunter did, and, you know, he moved up to the Cup Series, didn't work out, and, and he went back, and he, you know, worked his tail off. And, I mean, I see you running around the neighborhood. I, you know, I see you doing the right things. And, you know, if things don't work out the first time, is there something to be said for never giving up? You know, it, it, it must have been hell for you to take a step back, but to get a championship, which was something you never had on your resume, you know, to take these steps, when you do get back to Cup, will it make the journey more rewarding? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what you learn as you get older and stuff. You just got to keep working at it, you know? I mean, when you're younger, I mean, you're just trying to figure it all out. But once you get older, it's kind of just trying to figure out those little areas where you're missing it a little bit. And I think having this year where you get knocked down a little bit and you're able to sit back and really realize what you, what you need to do better. So I think uh, I tried to improve all those things this year, trying to work with my team and um, really get what we, what we needed in the cars. And, um, you know, you just got to keep working at it. And I think uh, – I don't know if I've been the guy who always has the most talent, really. I mean, I think I, I can drive a car, but I feel like if you just work at it enough, you can go out and, and if you have a good group around you, you can go out and, and make some stuff happen. Cool. Cole Kusamon with the Arizona Republic. First off, from one Cole to another, congratulations. Um, great night all around for SHR. I mean, Riley got a, another top five finish. Uh, to close out the season. I'm just curious how much you guys have leaned on each other throughout the season as a whole, but especially this end of the, you know, the playoffs and all that. Yeah, I mean, huge. I mean, Riley's been a huge part of this. I mean, he, if they made the playoffs, I mean, I would have been scared. <laughs> I mean, they had a lot of bad luck this year, but they they made it happen in the playoffs. So it's uh, it's cool to see. I mean, he's really putting it all together. And just their, how our teams have worked together this year, too. I mean, just being able to bounce ideas off each other and, really be able to get our cars better and better and better um, has been huge. And uh, he's been easy to work with too, you know, always wants to talk about things, isn't arrogant. Um, and he, you know, he always wants to be better, you know? So I think it's definitely been a good relationship and, you know, I, they're a huge part of being able to bounce. I mean, without them, we wouldn't know half the information we have now. So um, we wouldn't be where we're at. Well, Cole, I think that's all the questions we have for you tonight. Congratulations, outstanding season, outstanding race, and uh, we're happy to have you as our 2023 NASCAR Xfinity Series champion. Thank you, guys.